Yep. All right. So now, now we're we're going to do some marukus because, as I've mentioned in the past, the 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 history to do with the Browning, the Maruku and the Winchester for me is so fascinating. The 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 Browning B25 gun, we obviously we know 1931 was its conception thereabouts. We know the Second World War happened and the factories ceased production. Well there 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 is another manufacturer, being Maruku that makes the Browning shotgun to a very, very high standard. When I say a high standard, it's every bit as good as the Browning B25. Not quite in the higher end stuff, because the Maruku company, higher end is not what they're looking for. They were looking for the mass market, as Browning were to start with. But we're going backwards and forwards from different conversations. So this, this gun that we've got here is a is a Maruku. Some people will wrongly identify it as a, a Maruku 800. Now, because Marukus are my passion, Brownings, Winchesters, but Marukus particularly are my passion, I've looked at a lot of them. I've had quite a few of them in my hands personally, and I've seen some very high-end Marukus. But what you will find is the Maruku 800s are marked here on the action. Where this one says, hopefully, yeah, BC Maruku, and again, I've never managed to work out what BC is, but BC Maruku. On the Model 800s, it will say Model 800. That gives it away. And it also gives this gun away, the fact that it isn't a Model 800, because it isn't marked. In Browning's tradition, Maruku don't mark to say what models. They don't mark to say it's a superior grade, it's a field grade, it's a diamond grade, it's a hunter grade. Now, when I'm talking about those grades, that is that is an American grading system. When you look very hard, to say very hard, when you look, you will see that the Maruku importer in America was a firm called Charles Daly. Charles Daly imported Marukus into America from the early 60s through to about 1975. The reason they done it till about 1975 is because in 1976 the Browning Sitori came out and then Browning took the reins to the importing of America and slowly what they've done is they've They've taken the reins at Maruku. Now Maruku isn't its own company anymore, it's it's wholly owned by Browning. And that's just a snippet, that's just a tiny, tiny little bit. The factory moved two different locations, and actual pictures from the inside of the factory, modern pictures are easy to find, but older pictures are quite difficult. Now, going backwards and forwards, different conversations, this Maruku here. I have seen in articles, not articles, they're like price lists basically, this gun described as either a 3700 or a 3800 Maruku. I can't confirm that or deny it because it's not marked. As I keep saying, it's the markings that make the gun special or, or make the gun average. Well, luckily enough, this gun was imported into the UK. It was imported into the UK in 1969. It was proofed at the Birmingham Proof House in 1969. On the English proof marks, which when you've looked at enough Marukus, you will, you will see the English proof marks will stick out like a sore thumb. There is a date code system, much like the Italians, much like the Germans. 1969 this gun, so we are talking 69, 79, 89, 99, 2009. 49 years old, 69, 79, 89, yep. 99, 2009, yeah, nearly 60, yep. nearly 60 years old, basically, 50 years old, well, the, it's old, <laughs> it's old, but well, that was what I was trying <laughs> to get to, the, the gun itself, although it outwardly looks like a Browning, mechanically, inside, 
it's to say completely different is is quite a broad statement what you will find with the b25s across the board is the hammers on a b25 on a 525 on a Citori, on a 425 on a winchester the hammers pivot at the bottom of the action here so your strike on your top barrel is very positive your strike on your bottom barrel can be if you've got some older eastern block cartridges your strike on your bottom barrel can be ever so slightly light again story for another day what you will find with this maruku is the hammers are pivoted one at the top of the action here one at the bottom of the action here the reason that they do that is so you've got a parallel strike on your striker pin when i say parallel basically like this and like this on the later marukus on the brownings on the b25s you've got two slightly different striker angles one like this and one like that so that's just one of the differences between the two also what you will find we looked at a very old browning b25 a couple of weeks ago browning used coil springs in all of their over and unders i've not seen one that's got v springs this gun has got v springs in it why did maruka use v springs look at their japanese look at their samurai swords they are particularly good with steel making v springs so you've got the v spring top lever in this gun you've got v spring kickers and you've got v spring main springs some people perhaps you being one of them will say you get a crisper trigger pull with a v spring it's not something i've really ever encountered to be honest with you you pull the trigger till the gun goes off but some people are quite sensitive to trigger pulls so although this gun outwardly looks like a browning a1 a browning lightning mechanically it's completely different inside this gun's in 26 inch and this gun is marked to say it's skeet and skeet choke if you have a skeet browning the choking is quarter quarter you tend to find with marukus and winchesters when they mark skeet they mean it so cylinder cylinder i have measured this gun and this gun has got about four and a half to five thousandths five thousandths of an inch choking in both barrels whether that's been retro choked at some point in its life again retro choking we'll talk about another day but it's got some choke in it now it's got a wider rib on it being it's a skeet gun can you bring the, the camera over here paul and I'll, I'll take the gun apart so let's just let's just look at the markings now this will say maruku firearms company uh, yeah, Maruku Firearms. Firearms Manufacturing Group, I believe that is. Co. I believe that says Coyote. Yeah. Coachy, yeah. Coachy. Coachy. Coachy, Coachy, Coachy yeah. Japan. That is the first factory. They moved to uh, a second factory later on down the line. These, let me spin it around that way, Paul. These are the Japanese proof marks, basically. I haven't managed to find a reference book to tell me exactly what they mean, but I would assume this is the this is the provincial proof. This will be the nitro proof, clearly because it's MP. Mm -hmm. You've got your 12 and you've got your 70 millimeter chambers. Without going too in depth, we do not accept the Japanese proofing system because they're not in the CIP or they're not in the European Union. There's a, there's a few countries or countries in the European Union who accept their proof marks. Japanese, we don't. So let me spin it round. Oh no, it's that side. So these are the relevant, these are the relevant Birmingham proof marks yep. with your BMP stamped on it, all right? Because we're going back quite a few years now, Paul, this was proofed at what you call three and a quarter tons per square inch proofing, okay? Again, we'll talk about that another day, 
an interesting fact, well it's not really a fact, but an interesting thing with these guns, Paul. An interesting thing with these guns. The bottom barrel was proofed at 729 of an inch. Yep. And the top barrel, 719 of an inch. Uh, yeah, 719 yep. of an inch. And the top barrel was proofed at 729 of an inch. Oh yeah, the top one. Oh yeah, up there. Yep. And if you measure one barrel over the other, I believe it's going to be the 719. The 719 bore is only just going to be in proof. So it's proofed at 719. It will go out of proof at 729. If we measure that bottom barrel, it probably measures 727 from the factory. Right. That's just a, a thing that they do, basically. So a few other little things that I can show you on the gun. Let me think about them. We're marked here, two and three quarter inch. Yeah. 12 bore, two and three quarter inch. Now, you can't quite see what you're looking for, Paul. These are your ejector kickers, basically. Yeah. Just underneath the kicker, about here, there's a flat piece of steel. Can we, yeah, we can just see that, yep. That's the V-spring, basically. You can look at the Marukus, and if you find a gun that's got V-springs in it, the, the way that you will know, if I had two guns along here, Paul, there would be a, a coil spring that would jump out at you to say, oh, I'm a coil spring. Mm -hmm. So that is a V-spring action. What I am what I want to show people, have a look at the engraving as well, Paul. Have a look at the engraving. Now, yeah, I think that's the one. I've got a, a similar, yeah, it is similar as well. I've got a similar gun to this that I was lucky enough to get it in its original cardboard box, okay? Its cardboard box is marked to say it's a superior grade, and that'll be on the engraving and on the woodwork, all right? The gun that I've got in its original box, again, isn't marked. The engraving is similar. So therefore, I'm going to call this a superior grade Maruku. Now, what's really nice about this gun, Paul, is I do genuinely think this is one of the most versatile over and unders about. The, do you want to put it back down, mate? Yeah. And I'll, and I'll just carry on, I'll just carry on the call. I do genuinely, genuine, genuinely believe this is one of the most versatile guns around. It's got a nice piece of drop on the stock that the inner ski gun, you can just pick the gun up and it will feel right and it will feel nice. It hasn't got too much cast on it. The overall length of the stock is probably 14, 14 and a quarter. And the weight of the gun, the weight of the gun, probably about eight pounds. Which for a, a 26 inch ski gun with a, a 14 and a quarter inch stock, in modern terms, is quite heavy. But what you've got with this gun, you've got a very nice finished stock. You've got beautiful deep blacking on the action, very deep scroll work on the action that you don't get any more because of the price basically. 26 inch barrels, little bit of choke. This gun will fit in wherever you go. If you went game shooting on a, a little walked up shoot, nobody would bat an eyelid at it. If you sat in a pigeon hide with it, because it's got a few little knots and scratches on it, if you've got a few more sitting in a pigeon hide, it's not the end of the world. These guns can be had at the right auctions and in gun shops these guns can be had for a snippet of their true value the reason i say that is being a skate gun being 26 inch barrels it's it's not to everybody's taste nowadays it would fit in game shooting it would fit in pigeon shooting and it would excel at sporting clays at a club level club shoot very, very nice to see the gun, 1969, 79, 89, 99, 2019, yeah, so it's coming up 50 years old, which is what I was trying to work out earlier. Very, very nice to see this gun in unbutchered condition. It's not had a recoil pad fitted to it, it's not had a comb razor fitted to it, 
the stock isn't broken it's it's not abused now I will let you into a little secret the fact that when this gun came to the market and I have got another Maruku that's a, a quite a bit older than this gun now without going too much into the history with the Marukus the 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 factory started production in about 1950 so we'll say just after the Second World War I've got lots more Marukus to do I've just decided to do this one today it's got a bit of wear on it overall very nice gun and yeah, thanks very much, people. Sorry to bore you. I hope you enjoy the videos.